Hello, welcome to another Cleve Tech Tech Tip. And this week we're back to the chassis on the old slot stocks car. So you might have seen this series of videos, but if you haven't, I'll put a link on the screen just up here. But you would have seen me strip the chassis down and you'd have also seen me work on this motor here, which is now ready to go back in the car. So if you haven't seen those, take a look. But we're gonna get on with the chassis today and we're gonna be talking gears and wheels and setting up the back axle. So one of the things I did was check the bushings in the back axle and as you can see there's quite a bit of movement there in that back axle so those bushes are going to need to be replaced. I also measured the axle height from side to side and it's not quite the same either side. It's not too bad, but it's not quite the same. So if I measure it here, 954 and the other side, 967. So we're over a tenth of a millimeter difference from side to side. So I'd need to reset that back axle as well to be the same height either side, or at least that's what I thought. But these pair of tyres that I've got, they're supposed to be a pair, but again, if I measure these as a pair of tyres, this one comes out at, a bit bigger than that, 18, 18, 8. This one comes out at 19, 5. So they're nowhere near the same diameter, and obviously that's going to affect the way the car performs. Now, the car only has to turn left. So there is a thought <clears throat> that I could put the larger tire on the outside. And I'm about to show you what effect that would have if that's what I did. So I'll move these out the way. So what I've done, I put the larger tire on this side here, on the right hand side of the axle if the car was traveling in that direction. And I'll just push the axle and you can see what happens. I'll push it via the middle. See how the axle started turning left and keeps turning? Let that roll back again, back to the start. I'll do it again, push it again. You can see it starts to turn left. That's because this tire is bigger than that tire. And that causes the car to attempt to drive the car to the left. Now I know on some full scale oval tracks, they look at, they change tire sizes and that can affect the way the car handles. Not too sure how that works with a little slot stocks car, but that's an option. But I've contacted the owner and the owner's happy that he's going to change the tyres anyway at some point. Uh, maybe get tyres that are exactly the same size, maybe have tyres that haven't got great big chunks missing out the edges of them. Um, bit of a shame on the quality of those kind of tyres. But he's going to get tyres and he's going to try and match the sizes. So I'm going to set the back axle up on the car to accept tyres that are the same size either side. Um, and get the axle nice and level. So I've got my iron, soldering iron nice and hot, around about 450 degrees. So I'm going to remove these old axle bushes just by heating it up here. There's quite a lot of brass here to heat up, but here we go. There we go. I'm just going to take the whole lot off because I'm not happy with the alignment of it all either so i'm just going to take the whole lot of part of the back i sort of got a bit fed up with it really i couldn't leave it like that so there we go strip the whole lot down remove those one eternity later well what an absolute nightmare that was getting them out one one of these little bushes was really really stuck into like the pillar block so I had to lever it out a bit with quite a bit of heat to get it to come out. But they're out, so they're pretty scrapped. They can go in the bin. I'm going to clean up all of these pieces, ready to put them all back again. And I'll be back again soon. If you haven't seen how I cleaned some of these pieces up in my previous video, make sure you watch the video up here where I take some of the rest of the chassis apart and clean all the pieces up. And you can see some of the techniques I used to get them a little bit cleaner and get rid of all the solder. So I'm off to do that now, and I'll be back in a minute.
a little longer than a few minutes later. So I'm back. Pieces have been cleaned up. So I've cleaned up the center section. I've cleaned up these pillar blocks. They're not, they're sort of all a bit beaten up really with bits hacked out of them. This bit's got an extra bit hacked out. Don't quite know why they're sort of so hacked about, but I suppose that's quite in the history of the car really and how that's happened over the years. Um, that's sort of why I'm going to put it back together pretty much how it was. But I'm going to put these new bushes into the pillar blocks and then I'm going to so solder these in first of all into each pillar block, nice and flat and aligned. Then I'm going to actually use the axle tightness in these bushes to set the pillar blocks up nicely. So my soldering iron is nice and hot. I'm going to apply a little bit of flux. This is Lucky Bob's flux. I'll show you, a, or I'll put a link of where you can get that from in the video description down below. So I'm going to apply some flux around where the bushing sits into the pillar block using my little flux brush like that. So the iron's nice and hot. So we'll add a little bit of solder to the iron. And there we go. And then we'll heat it up. And hopefully the solder should flow nicely around that bushing. Apply a little bit more solder and or a little bit more flux and then a little bit more solder just to fill in any gaps that were there. So here we go. I'm back. They're soldered in, cleaned up. You can see the brass has had a bit of a hard life. It's like, how, are there, how on earth can there be gouges out of the face of the brass here? How does that happen? I don't know. And look at all these hack marks around here. No idea. But anyway, it's had a hard life. But they're soldered in now. They're aligned with the pillar blocks. Now to just get the whole thing aligned at the back end. Before I solder these pillar blocks back onto the chassis, um, one of the things with doing a sort of renovation is you take things apart and you find all sorts of weird stuff and you have to sort of fix problems as you go along. Well, this center section has been cut away so much. It is just so flexible and weak. And you might have seen in a previous video, I mentioned these little cutouts that somebody had done here um, for the drop arm just makes it so weak. So before I solder them on, I'm going to put some piano wire over the top of the chassis along the main rails, which will give it a lot more strength and stop it from sagging in the middle. It also makes the chassis slightly stiffer, which may also help with some grip with these sort of horrible silicon tires that they use. So I'm going to lightly tin the chassis along there and there. So that means apply a coat of solder to it. Do the same with these rails and heat them up and solder them on. So I'll apply some flux. Now notice all these chassis rails are cleaned up the best I can. So they should tin okay. But you can see in places the metal is still a little bit dull. It's hard to clean up years and years of uh, pitting and rust and so on that was on the chassis. But we'll give it a go. And we'll see how well that chassis tins. Not too bad. And the other side. You can see maybe a little bit more. The solder's not taking here. But while it's warm, we get some good acid flux on it. And we should get a little bit more tinning possible. There we go. You can see it's starting to tin now. So I'll just do that a little bit more. I'll tin these in the same way and I'll be back. So here we go. That's the two rails soldered to the chassis. That strengthened it up quite a lot. It does still flex a bit, but it's much stronger in the middle and it actually sits much more or much nicer uh, and flat on the block. So I said at the start of the video that we'll get these rear pillar blocks soldered back into the chassis. And that's what I'm about to do now. But I'm going to explain some of the process of how I've managed to sort this out and arrange and align everything that I need. Now, these are the tyres that the guy intends using, or my customer on this car intends using. Now, you know that when I've measured them before, they measure sort of quite large tyres. So I've got to make sure there is enough ground clearance on these. Um, just to recap, these come out at... 19.6 something like that 
19.6. Obviously, that's going to give me plenty of clearance when I look at the halfway line of the motor. And that's the key thing. The gears or the gear choices that I've got, even these old Palmer gears here, they're all designed for the motor shaft to be in line with the center of the gear. They're not designed to be offset or hypoid gears, etc. So I need to make sure that this back axle and the motor are in line so that the axle is smack bang in the middle of the motor shaft so I get the height right on the axle. And that works out quite nicely because as I say, these tires are quite big. It gives plenty of ground clearance on the car. Um, these slot stocks race on, some of the tracks are actually quite bumpy. Um, they might have improved over the years, but last time I raced, I raced on a track that used copper tape and there was big blobs of solder joining the copper tape together and it was all a bit bumpy. The joints in the tracks are a bit bumpy. Um, the tracks are moved around quite a bit, assembled and disassembled, disassembled. so it, it, you know, it is expected quite a bit to get some uh, dodgy joints on the track. So there needs to be a fair bit of ground clearance under the car. I've measured the height of a 16D, so this comes out at 16.6 millimetres, which means that if the motor was flat on a block, then the axle height would need to be 8.3, obviously to the centre of the axle. Now, I've then hunted around and seen what can I find in order to space everything up correctly, you know, in terms of the chassis and everything, and get it dead right. Well, I found these tyres. These are quite a hard silicone rubber as well, but these are a bit smaller. These are 17.6 millimetres, which gives a centre height of 8.8 .8 millimetres. So that's not quite right. So if I set it up with a chassis on the deck like this and the motor in place here and the pillar blocks across like that, that wouldn't quite get me right. This axle height would be just a little bit too high and above centre. It's okay for it to be a fraction, but not that much. So then I found a steel rule that's half a millimetre thick. So that then, if I put that under my chassis and under the motor like that and lift it up off the block by half a millimetre, then that pretty much works out right because I've got an axle height of 8.8 8 .8 here with another half a millimetre, that brings me 8.3, which is half of the 16.6. So I know it's a bit of maths. Uh, you might have seen some numbers on the screen. If not, I'll put them on the screen now. But then that'll explain where I come to with my calculations. Then the next thing to do is to also look at the exact position that the axle is going to sit in in regards to the motor. This is definitely the biggest gear that I could ever get away with using on this car. Bearing in mind, as I say, the size of those finished tyres, this gear is 17.6. So in order to leave enough clearance, that, that's, the, that's the biggest I'm, I would ever get away with being able to use on this car. These two gears are a slightly smaller diameter. So obviously when that gear sits on the axle, I need to make sure that the axle is, is in the right place here for the gear to mesh on the pinion and also maybe need to, need to get it right for the smallest possible gear as well. I then also need to consider the design of the chassis and the design of the chassis has a bar which comes across here that joins the two pan sections together. So I need to make sure that that is also clear and not blocked by the gear that's going to be in place and also uh, by the pillar blocks that are going to be soldered in. So I need to move the axle further forward enough. So they're all the decisions that I've sort of had to make in order to assemble it back together in order to get this in the right place. So I'm going to jig this all up now, get it all lined up and I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so I've stuck all that down. A bit unconventional, I know, but I've got the ruler underneath the chassis. I've got the pillar blocks on the axle. They're a good fit on the axle, those bushes, so the pillar blocks don't move around a lot. They don't wobble. They don't uh, sort of go off vertical. They hang nicely. So I've taped the chassis down and I've taped the axle in place. Now, how do you know I've got it at 90 degrees? Well, I accurately drew two lines on my block, one obviously along that way and one vertical. So one horizontal, one vertical. And then I've lined up my axle with those lines and the center line, the chassis, or let's say the ruler with the other line. Now, some people use a piece of graph paper on the building block. That works really nicely as well. I didn't have graph or square paper with me. So I just accurately uh, drew a right angle or, or two lines that crossed over at a right angle. 
So I've lined all that up, held that in place, and then I'm going to tack in my pillar blocks to the chassis. So my iron should be nice and hot. So I'm gonna dab a little bit of flux at the front there, and a little bit of flux at the back of that one there. As I say, with more map perhaps jig items and more specialist uh, equipment, I could jig this up a lot better. Um, I do actually have a block that's got some holes drilled in it, so you can align chassis, etc. But that's only really for 332 axles. Um, I know I could change the pins and take the pins out and push it against a pin, etc., etc. But I just thought I'd show you how you might be able to do it if you didn't have any specialist equipment, really. So I've got my soldering iron. It's nice and warm. I've used flux on these bits. So now I'll just apply a little bit of solder to the soldering iron. And then I should be able to just heat it up and tack that in place. There we go. And tack it at the front as well. There we go. Again, just check my alignment because there is, there is still a little bit of movement in this axle. A little bit of movement. So I've just checked the alignment again. Put my head over the top, whether I'm happy with that. Excuse my top of my head in the image. Then I'm going to, I'll tack this side as well. And then I'll check the alignment again. Okay, so I've tacked both sides. And I'll just show you a simple way that you can check the alignment with the chassis. So I've taken my digital calipers. I can put it on the axle at the back and put it over the front T-bar here. And I can measure it and line that up. And then do the same the other side. And I can just compare the two sides like that and like that. And then I can see if there's any difference between the two. And I could obviously readjust the back axle accordingly. But my lines were pretty accurate. I've tacked them in accurately there. It feels like the same gap either side. So I'm very happy that that back axle is in line with the front of the car. Obviously, I can line the front axle up as well and I know it's in line with the centre line here. So here we go, that's both pillar blocks soldered into place. Axle spins. I've soldered all the way along now, I haven't just tacked them in but I've been very careful. I left the axle in place when I soldered along the whole length just to help keep the alignment and act as a bit of a heat sink as well. Um, seems fine, seems okay. Now, those of you who are saying that's probably not strong enough, and you're right, it's not strong enough, or I'm not happy with that solder joint just along there as being strong enough to hold all of this upright, stopping everything from flexing. So I'm going to be putting some more bracing on. I am going to finish soldering the motor in. Uh, then I've got to do all this drop arm and all the pans still to come. So there's still a fair bit of work to go. But for today's video, I'm leaving it like that. I'm going to clean up all of these, and I'll see you back again next time for when we get more assembled. Thanks for watching that Cleave Tech Tech Tip. Hope you like it. As I say, the point is to try and get across things you can actually do without needing too many specialist tools uh, to do the job. And as I say, this is a, sort of an old sort of restoration or a, a sympathetic restoration, I suppose, to try and make the car work again, sort of half decently around the track. So it's one of those things that you find all sorts of weird stuff that's gone on over the years of an old chassis and short of replacing everything, you can't really, uh, you know, make it perfect again. You've just got to go with what you've got and decide what bits you're replacing, what bits you're not replacing. So, yeah, that's why everything is perhaps not quite as neat. And there's no way I would sort of <laughs> contemplate building a new chassis like this. Uh, but in terms of yeah, the techniques that I'm going through, they should all be nice, nice, useful techniques you can use at home to restore perhaps some old chassis you might have bought off of eBay um, or Facebook or places like that, that you could restore and you could get going again on your track. So I hope you enjoyed it. Hit the big thumbs up like button down below if you did like it, that'd be great. Uh, as again, tell me, write any comments. If you've got any good ideas, any simple tools you might have lying around at home that are useful to use, let me know in the comments and have a watch of my other videos subscribe by hitting the big c that'd be brilliant thank you and see you again next time